Building a Stuart 504 boiler plant, part 22. Putting it all back together. Starting with the block that supports the hand pump. This is screwed into position on the baseboard using two wood screws. And just for the viewer who took the time to comment and ask me, wood screw, does that mean the screw is made out of wood? Well, no. A wood screw is generally a metal screw that screws into wood. So now that's cleared up, I can continue with the reassembly. Well, I never stopped really. At the moment, I'm screwing the boiler mounting blocks to the board using some brass wood screws, and they're made of brass, not wood. These are also made of brass, and these are brass cheese head bolts. And they're not called cheese head bolts because the heads are made of cheese. They're called cheese head bolts because the heads are round, like a very small scale model of a piece of cheese. And another name for these, I believe, is machine screws. But either way, I call them bolts. They are slot head bolts. Slot head cheese head bolts. So that clears that up. Either way, they're used for fastening the boiler down onto the board. The construction methods and manufacture of the two steel blocks and the two pieces of drilled brass angle are shown in detail in a previous episode. Apart from needing to give the baseboard more coats of varnish, I initially removed all the parts from the baseboard because I could not get the tap in to thread the holes to hold the condenser in place because of the close proximity of the condenser to the boiler. So before giving the baseboard more coats of varnish, I threaded all the holes. And in this clip, I'm showing the fitting of the condenser to the baseboard using a couple of cheese head brass screws, not wood screws, and also some brass washers. The washers are there to stop the brass bolts from marking the paint. Already you can see one of the problems of having things left in bare metal. The copper of the condenser is starting to tarnish, and I could polish it up, but there's no point, because in a couple of weeks it would tarnish back to this again. And this is one of the problems with model steam engines. On a full-size steam engine, all the copper piping is much bigger, and it's easy to clean. Well, it's not easy, but it's simpler to clean, because you can get a cloth and polishing stuff in and around the pipes. But on things like this, it's very difficult to get into the corners without removing anything. And a few viewers have suggested lacquering the parts. Well, I don't do that for two reasons. One is, I don't like the look of lacquered metal. It just looks wrong to me. And after a while, the lacquer coat gets damaged and the metal underneath starts to tarnish. And if you don't believe me, have a look at my short series called How to Restore a Stuart No. 4 Steam Engine. And that's the steam engine that's going on this plant. And unfortunately, someone had lacquered that engine. All the bright parts were lacquered. But over a period of years, the bright parts underneath the lacquer went rusty and the engine looked really bad, but it's okay now. You've just seen me fitting the steam turret in place with a brass bolt from underneath, and now, in the same way as I fitted the condenser to the board, I'm fitting the water tank. And once again, I'm using these cheese head, machine screws, brass screws, set screws, that are not made of wood. And as before, I've used a washer to prevent damage to the paint as I tighten the bolt. I'm being very careful to make sure that the screwdriver doesn't slip off these bolts and mark the paint. Time now to fit the water pump. And this is not a Barco spanner, it's a Teng Tools spanner that I'm trying out for the first time. And it seems to be okay, as you can see it hasn't rounded the nut, although it is a little bit big for this application. In this clip I'm securing the water pump to the mounting block and these are 6BA nuts that I'm trying to get onto the studs, and it was a really fiddly job. It took a lot longer to do it than I show in the video, but you didn't really want to see a grown man cry, so I edited the video to make it look easy. But the nuts must have fallen off the studs, on average, about five times per stud. What I should have done is just drilled the holes in the metal block and used some bolts. But no, I like to do it the hard way. The main problem for not using bolts is because the side of the hexagon part of the pump sticks out a little bit too far, and by using a screwdriver to tighten the bolts into the block, I may have marked the paint on the hexagon part which sticks out a bit too far, and as you can see, I'm doing a bit of a touch-up job on the paint here using a felt tip pen. This paint marks very, very easily. Time now to start the piping. The pipe between the pump and the water tank is okay, I polished that up as I made it. The rest of the pipe had just been cleaned with a piece of Scotch-Brite after silver soldering. 
So now it was a polishing extravaganza. I didn't show the polishing spindle operation in this video because in my video called How to Silver Solder for Beginners, I feature the use of a polishing spindle in that. The second piece of pipe to put in place after I'd polished it was the piece that goes from the economizer to one of the boiler's check valves. So now, if I filled the bottom tank with water and moved the pump handle, the water would come out of the top of the pump under pressure, round the loop, through the economizer coil, and back out to the check valve and into the boiler. Regular viewers will notice that now I'm using my barco spanner to tighten the union nuts on the economizer. There's nothing wrong with the Teng Tools adjustable spanner, except it's a little big for this application. Some viewers, I'm sure, make comments just for the sake of it. One viewer actually put, I noticed that your adapter that you made for the clack valves is in the way of the firehole door. Well, hang on a minute. These are dummy firehole doors, and they're just sort of built into the casting for effect. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of civilization as we know it. To be honest, I like these kind of comments because it gives me something to talk about when I'm doing a routine job like this. Here I'm fitting a piece of copper pipe between the injector and the check valve on the boiler, and I've just noticed something. The delivery cone is missing from the end of the injector on the left hand side. Hmm, I wonder where that's gone. Without exception, when I remove the piping from an injector, I will always fit a union nut on each end to hold the cones in position, but I thought, well as this tank is just going to sit on the bench while I finish the baseboard, the cones aren't going to fall out. But when I picked the tank up off the bench, I noticed there was some water in the tank, and as it was a very small amount of water, I tipped this out onto the workshop floor, which was lucky really, because normally I tip water out in the garden on a gravel path. So all I had to do was follow the water trail, and there was the cone, on the floor by the water. So now, before I lose it again, I'm tightening the union nut, which is now holding the pipe onto the cone. So that's one side of the injector done. Thinking about it, I was lucky this time. If I'd have thrown the water into the garden, I'd have never found this cone and I would have had to buy a new injector. The next part of the job is to connect the exhaust pipe from the condenser to the fitting at the base of the chimney, not forgetting to tighten the union nuts. This short bent piece of pipe is the drain from the condenser and this needs polishing too. So as if by magic, I remove it and no sooner have I removed it, I fit it back in place, nicely polished. This job I've definitely been putting off. I have to clad this piece of copper piping using some string. First thing to do is to wet the end of the piece of string, put some cyanoacrylate adhesive on the pipe, that's super glue or CA glue, and as soon as the wet end of the piece of string touches the adhesive, it's immediately bonded to the pipe. And with the end of the piece of string firmly bonded to the pipe, I can start doing this winding the string tightly around a piece of copper pipe. Periodically I apply some cyanoacrylate adhesive just to sort of fix it in place. This job is extremely edited, I really could not leave it running in real time, this is the last part of it. The job actually took over an hour to do, and it's very boring and very tedious. I've never clad a piece of copper piping this length before, I also had to clad the piece of pipe that goes from the turret to the steam inlet of the injector. And all I need to do now is paint this cladding. But that's it for now, I can do no more. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.